I'm prepping stuff for the uh, next immersion deployment uh, tomorrow. And on one miner in particular, uh, this is going to be a bit main amp miner S19. It is the 90 terahash a second version. I can't get brains to flash onto this thing. I I've tried many times, it's failed. I have successfully flashed over 20 miners with brains, uh, but this one fails. So, why not take this as an opportunity whoosh, to install one of these guys? I mean, that's why we got them. This is the brains control board. And it's pretty easy to change. I mean, to be frank, it's very easy. Uh, we're just going to take this lid off and replace the board inside. So let's go ahead and do that. Caspa ASIC mining rigs are like just literally cash cows. Okay, they are some of the most profitable machines in the world. They earn ridiculous passive income. There's all kinds of different models from basically mini miners that you can plug into any outlet in your house to bigger miners for the more serious crypto miner. If you wanna grab one and get it shipped to you pretty quick, or at least like mine were, check out ASIC Marketplace. They've helped us expand our Caspa ASIC miners, which have been our most profitable mining rigs in the mining farm this year. And uh, by the way, you can save some coin by punching in the code Bosco. We're just gonna need to remove the lid here. So we're just going to unscrew this till it's like almost falling out, makes this loose. When you look on the back side, you'll see that the front doesn't actually screw into it. Voila, forgot my tripod and it's a little hard to do with one hand, but you get the gist. So this is the control board that has been beating me up. Screw this guy, honestly. So this is the brains control board here, the BCB100. Very simple and very similar, right? When we look at the layout, we look at the orientation and we're just going to take whatever is over here and replace it. We got the power supply data cable here. That's going to go to this little slot. Then we have four fan connectors. Those will go to the four fan connectors. And then we're going to see three hashboard ribbon cables and we can just connect them one, two, three. So there's a couple ways to go about this. Uh, pretty much this control board is only in here with tension and it it slid into place. When you really look at the board, well, there's no screws going into the device or anything like that. It slid into this rail on both sides right here. So we're just gonna pop this faceplate off, slide it right out. Now, just taking a screwdriver or drill, removing those screws, look, comes right off. It's actually zip tied to the fan power cable, which is that multicolored cable running up. So now we'll just push this out. And now you can easily see what I'm talking about. This, this thing is just slid right in here. Remember on this board, you shouldn't be yanking anything. Some of these will have clip connections. Like you notice this is a six pin PCIe connection. Uh, that'll clip out. This one, you push and pull, and you'll just pull these backwards. But I'm gonna go ahead and use both hands on this one so I don't jack this up. Because these are delicate parts. And while I may be replacing this control board, I don't wanna break it or ruin it. I wanna have it as a backup or standby. Uh, always good to have spare parts on a mining farm. So, unplugged, slide it out. I did confirm with brains. You see the three ribbon connectors. So upon confirmation with them, they want you to use slot one, two, three. Do not utilize this fourth one. Assuming you have this three board connection. Click. Click. Oh. Oh shit. Here I am saying all this BS, making a video, doing crap with one hand. Lo and behold. I 
took this out with the connector still attached. Wow, that was on there so tightly. I had to pry it off with a handy dandy screwdriver and I did successfully reinstall it on the control board. The pins weren't bent, so that's, that's great. And I mirrored the orientation that's on the brains board so I didn't have to look at the source footage but basically where the openings were on this uh, uh, pin connector. The openings are going uh, out from the board here. When you look at the P PSU data connector, you'll notice that the lines on it are offset. So with that in mind, we line it up with proper orientation here. Push it in, slides right in. Now I just gotta plug these guys up. Easy enough, but that was definitely a two-hand job. Everything looks good to me. While I'm in here, right, I'm just gonna double check. Those are seated well. And uh, let's get this thing put back together. So we're just gonna do everything we did in reverse order, which begins with putting this faceplate back on. Going great! This is going just great. One-handed install. Do yourself a freaking favor around here and don't tighten these too tight until you get the top latch back on before you're out there looking like a freaking idiot. Well yeah, it's back on. I don't think I nipped the wire. That's good. This is still loose. Gonna need to tighten him up. Got my handy dandy screwdriver. Not left-handed, but gonna act like I am. Come on. Ambidextrous. It's a pretty long drawn out process, you know, to record this and talk while I'm doing it. It's something, you know, first time take you 5, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how fast you're trying to go and how comfortable you feel with this kind of stuff. Uh, but that's it. So I'll throw this back in that box, in that anti static bag, and let's throw this back into the mining farm. So, plugged it in to C13 connections. Uh, to a C20 uh, integrated PDU in my case. Now, uh, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a new IP address, assuming you're using DHCP on this Miner. Uh, so it's essentially a new computer, a new device as far as your uh, network is concerned. So let's log in. So I've got this app, I use Eero. Uh, for my network over here and so I, I found the IP address uh, the host name came up as minor d 3341 uh, for me and hash mining SRA as the manufacturer here uh, so I went ahead and labeled it uh, just with how it's going to be deployed in my mining farm talk about having a day all right so <laughs> when you saw me earlier in this video I'm like you know, let's, let's let's break it out, All right? A little snapshot. I'm like, hey, uh, Brains firmware didn't install remotely, so I'm gonna put the control board in. Oh, what a genius move, me. Then I put the Brains control board into this specific model, and this was like uh, about a week ago. I go through the whole install, and Brains says that it supports this miner, but. Not exactly. Look at this screenshot. They support the 88 chip model. They do not support the 126 chip model. I fortunately and unfortunately have the better model with 126 uh, ASIC chips per hash board, right? Because an ASIC miner is just a custom computer right with your little control board piece which is like the brains it's the computer portion essentially um you think raspberry pi ish right then you have the hash boards and they are these purpose-built chips that all they do is one thing for example just crunch the sha 256 mining algorithm basically more chips per board they were better boards uh and they can be overclocked further and we've actually squeezed some pretty impressive performance out of the 126 terahash model over the last week. But it was not on brains because they do not support this model yet. Uh, so that was quite a curveball. And so upon further testing, research, and deliberation uh, with the brains team, I was able to confirm a few things, right? But let's take a quick step back and go over 
um, you know, what Brains does. So they support the Ant Miner S19 series and really all of the previous uh, generations. Uh, their focus is, you know, being able to customize your miner, right? Overclock, underclock, efficiency. They have their tuner aspect. The downside is you pay for Brains even though it's free with their dev fee of two and a half percent. Uh, but you do get a 0% pool fee if you mine on the Brains mining pool. You can remotely deploy Brains with the toolbox, which we talked about that in a couple videos and made a dedicated video to it. You can do bulk installations, uh, you can update it, and it's not automatic. You have to manually punch in the firmware for this to happen, but it's easy enough. Uh, and their support is very helpful. You know, it has all these benefits, and in particular, it's when we got my shirt on today, the they sent me. Uh, when we deployed our DCX uh, immersion enclosure, we got a crash course on Brains because we needed immersion ready miners, and uh, they did not send us any fan spoofers, and that was something I overlooked in my initial deployment. They support Stratum V2, and uh, you know, there's a couple other good things about Brains, so, but that's the gist. And the Brains control board is just Brains. But there's some interesting things about this. Like, for example, it's not really much more expensive than a Bitmain, you know, factory control board. We see the AM Logic board right here, 100 bucks. We see the BeagleBone board right here, 90 bucks. We see the Xilinx board right here, 140 bucks. And then you look at the Brains board, right? Uh, per Altair's pricing, who have been fantastic to work with on a lot of fronts and you can save some coin by punching in the code vos coin uh and as always we appreciate if you use our link down in the video description below all that stuff uh because uh in particular we started working with altair a lot uh because we started deploying his mining pdus all over the farm and they've just been freaking fantastic uh, but he's actually helped us source backup power supplies control boards a bunch of other parts uh that's made scaling our mining farm a uh, much more just to be frank, even possible. Uh, but the point here being, right, is that this is a great price point. In a way, it's kind of a novelty collector item, in my opinion. Works well. It has in our experience in testing, if it supports your model. It has, according to everyone I've talked to, it has, according to brains. But what else does it do? Enhanced efficiency, stability, and profitability. Custom designed by their team. It's made in China like every electronic is essentially. When we look at the technical specifications, four hashboard hardware support, high speed internal memory of four gigabytes. They use the ST Microelectronic Cortex A7 SD card slot, two user buttons, two gigs of RAM, an ethernet interface, and a single board computer. Look at that little guy. When we look at the information on this, this was a lot more interesting when Brains did not support remote installation onto pretty much every minor model that they support. Uh, and it's very easy, and we show that in the toolbox, but the toolbox is very new, and they've been developing these control boards for a long time. They also essentially hack the miner when they do their install. That's why, if you didn't know this, miners have to actually be mining for you to install most aftermarket firmwares, especially at least brains. Uh, so you have to turn it on, it starts mining, and then you can perform the installation. But this was only publicly released recently, especially with support for every operating system uh, beyond Linux, right? Windows support, Mac support. Uh, so this only recently became really accessible. Uh, the control board would have been a very good solution previously. The question has been raised, well, what if Bitmain figures out how to lock them out again in the future? And that's when Brains refers to their control board as Plan B. They have future plans to develop it further. And it's just a great uh, tool resource to have in their back pocket, right? If they get blocked out from being easily remotely installed, which is also essentially a free installation as opposed to dropping a hundred bucks on a control board. So the bottom line is the Brains control board is very cool. It's absolutely an achievement. And I think that they were very fair with how they priced it. It's the same price as other control boards. If you need a new control board for your, you know, miner, why not just get one of these? Unless you just don't want to use brains, you know, whether it's because of the dev fee or you just don't want to, or you want to pursue different firmware, or you want to use a different control board option because there are 
a couple aftermarket control boards now manufactured for uh, the Amp Miner series, which I love from a consumer point of view here. At the end of the day, I thought it was pretty funny that I pretty much installed the control board on like the only miner that I couldn't. Uh, that was just beautiful luck or happen ch chance, stance, whatever. Uh, so that's funny. Maybe funnier for you than it was for me. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. I was just like, what is going on? I've talked about this in a lot of other videos, but I really do enjoy brains. Um, it's been a very good experience. And when we look at my mining performance here on the brains mining pool, it's consistently good. Uh, you know, my earnings are good. Uh, my average payouts with all my miners right now at about two and a half pay to hash a second. Uh, is about $210 in Bitcoin or about 0.005 uh, BTC mine per day. We look at my miner performance. My miners are performing well. We look at their one day hash rate. They are pretty much mining where they're supposed to be. We see an S19J Pro 120 at about 120. S19K Pro 115 averaging above that. Uh, this one about 115. Uh, you may notice the XP is a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. I'm still working on the fine tuning of uh, that miner in particular, right? But, uh, and, and these are all on brains, by the way, just to be very clear. But the bottom line, the, the takeaway is, is, you know, I've had a good experience with their mining pool. I've had a good experience with their firmware. I've had a good experience with their control board. It's just, you know, sucks for me <laughs> that uh, of the minor model variation, I had the one off. Uh, that is not supported. They support almost every single Amminer S19 now, which is you know kind of funny. I feel like I just want to ship them this thing and be like, hey, support this thing. This isn't a sponsored review uh, of Brains or anything. Uh, Brains has sent us hardware. Altair has sent us hardware uh, to review. We do have relationships uh, with them. Uh, I'm fortunate that after doing this for over seven years, we have relationships with many companies uh, in cryptocurrency, especially in the mining sector, right? Uh, so right now I'm on a quest to review all the control boards, all the firmware, and continue refining my mining farm to make it more profitable, more efficient, right? Increase my, uh, you know, lifespan of my equipment uh, from, you know, it's just, you know, literally making it perform better long term and just running it in a fashion that increases its lifespan, right? As well as, you know, from a profitability point of view, increasing the lifespan of making this hardware more efficient. Uh, and also by getting the efficiency up, I am decreasing the electrical footprint and consumption, which is in essence, increasing the density of my mining farm, allowing me to deploy additional efficient miners. It's a unique way to go about this, I think. Uh, it's not the most common way, uh, but it's the path that I've been pursuing. And we'll see, uh, you know, in the end, if it was really the, the right path. Maybe there's just many paths, a few of them right. So yeah, this has been an interesting experience. I, I love the fact that this exists. I don't think there's really a point to buy one right now, other than if you think it's cool or a novelty or just to mess around with or really, it's ideally suited if you know your control board fries and you need a new one, uh, which happens. I've replaced three control boards uh, on my farm over the last year. So if I needed to buy another control board, I'd buy one of these, assuming it was suitable. And you know, obviously I, I wanted to run Brains. I'm excited to see where they take this and go with this. I would love for Brains to produce control boards, you know, for other minor manufacturers, as well as, uh, you know, either update these or make new boards that are compatible with the new Ant Miner S21 series and so forth. Having more options is better for everybody. And uh, it's really just as simple as that. So, hey, I'm Boss here on the Boss Coin YouTube channel, home of the CBO. And it's the Chief Brains Officer, but just so I don't get sued, that's with one eye. Tails Boss, our resident Shiba in here, the Doge Lord. She's a good girl. She's in my office looking at me. Why do I keep saying her name? Might be treat time, huh? We're gonna go get treats. See you later.